Welcome back to Kimchi Studios, where we highlight the achievements and learn from the hardships and journeys of inventors and product designers in the hopes of coming up with our own unique concepts, maybe just for use around the house to make our day easier or for sale in the hopes of hitting the jackpot someday. A jackpot that was enjoyed by a power couple just after World War II with a deceptively simple toy that became an iconic international sensation. But just as quickly as they found success, the future of the toy became uncertain and tumbled along the way. This novelty can be found in nearly every modern household, and the mere mention of its name is understood by most people around the globe today. This is the story of the Slinky. Richard Thompson James. Born on a cold day in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, March 27, 1918. He grew up when the television was an experimental concept. Radio, landline telephone, and newspaper all dominated daily communication and marketing. The toy market boomed in the Roaring Twenties with the likes of Raggedy Ann dolls, crayons, teddy bears, trains, chemistry sets, and many others. It was a simpler and more difficult time to grow up but not a bad one for the average kid living in the U.S. James attended a Quaker boarding school just west of the bustling city of Philadelphia. In 1939, he graduated with a degree in mechanical engineering from Penn State University, which would serve him in ways he never thought possible. It was at Penn State where he met his wife Betty Mattis, who was born just a month before him. They started a life like any ordinary couple, with plans of paying bills and raising a family. They eventually had six children together. Everything was textbook until the unexpected happened. 1943. Richard was working at a shipyard in Port Richmond, Philadelphia, an inventor thinker at heart, putting his recently acquired knowledge in mechanical engineering to good use. He was trying to come up with a way for ships to be able to suspend their instruments and prevent them from rattling around while on the high seas. He was using torsion springs for his concept to suspend the instruments on a shelf and dropped one, watching it stretch toward and bounce off of the ground. And an idea was born. He and Betty toyed with the spring in their home, letting their son play with it to see his initial reaction. They sent it tumbling down the stairs in their home, one, sometimes two steps at a time. Soon, they invited the neighborhood kids to further test the market for the slinky, and the kids loved hurling the thing and watching it reach the bottom. They couldn't seem to put it down. A small but promising success. The Jameses needed a name for their magical loops. Betty leafed through the dictionary, looking for just the right word for this thing. Then she found it, an adjective, slinky. The slinky. While most makers and product designers these days have the advantage of social media and creator hubs like Etsy and TikTok shop, back in the not too distant past, you had to use your legs, make a few calls, fork up some cash, and use your charm to persuade store managers to let you display your products on their shelves. And that is exactly what they did. The couple made a deal with Gimbel's Department Store, which was the place to shop in that city, originating in Wisconsin and opening up a second chain store in Philadelphia. Hey, that reminds me of another story of a guy from Wisconsin in my last video about the slap wrap toy. Make sure to check it out after this one. In fact, it will save you a lot of time if you subscribe so you don't forget where to find it. It was Christmas 1945. America had just wrapped up their European campaign for World War II. Great and terrible nuclear bombs made their debut and had devastated two Japanese cities. And American soldiers lucky enough to have survived the war were making their way home just in time for the holidays. By the way, remind me to tell you later about my grandfather who was in the desert for some of those nuclear tests. Betty and Richard seized this perfect opportunity to have their fidget toy ready for all eyes to see. The slinkies were displayed with their coils proudly unfurled, like a peacock, waiting for their first lucky customers to take them home, all 400 of them. But none of them sold. Often, it doesn't matter what product you have made, what it can do, how colorful and attractive the packaging may be, it comes down to the presentation. And the slinky sat, deafeningly silent. A boring, futuristic-looking piece of modern art. People didn't know they wanted it. Shoppers continued to walk by, ignorant of the hours of fun to be had within the looped layers. 
Rich grabbed a slinky on display, stepped forward and proceeded to toss the slinky between his hands. It appeared to stay, but the coil was oscillating back and forth. He let it stretch to the floor as if by mistake, then it shot back up into his hands. Over and over, he gently played with the silver snake, tossing it over the edge of the display, shocking onlookers with its graceful, cat-like landing as the tail end followed and collapsed with a faint cascade of musical notes trailing behind it. One by one, customers slowed to watch this new circus act as the metal slinky began to speak through the echoes of its coils, gently slamming into each other. It was both mesmerizing and musical. Betty had persuaded a friend to accompany her to Gimbel's, each with a dollar in hand to buy one to support Rich and entice other shoppers to take a gamble on the toy. As soon as the elevator doors opened to the floor Rich was on, they saw absolute chaos. Boxes slid off the shelves, the sounds of cash registers rang, and paper bills and coins could be heard slipping through hands into the money tray. Within 90 minutes, his entire inventory had sold out at the low price of $1 per slinky equivalent to about $16.71 as of today. In fact, I recently got three classic metal slinkies for less than $10 and gave them away as Christmas gifts. You can find a link to that in the description of this video. Often, when testing a market, inventors release their products at a low price to get a healthy customer base or fandom behind it, and then later raise the price over time until they can profit comfortably. Mr. James's hypnotic trick had worked. He and his wife were springing into a successful, bright future. The Slinky made its official debut in 1946 at the American Toy Fair at 200 Fifth Avenue in New York City, where the latest and greatest toys were shown early on to those in the industry. And not a moment too soon, as a hungry competitor was already advertising theirs in Chicago with the same Slinky toy named Mr. Walker. He secured patent number 2,415,012 on January 28, 1947, changing the world forever. Although there has been a major push for everything open source all the time, all at once, we live in a society, food costs money, and bills continue to stack up. Inflation is running rampant and the cost of living is getting out of control. Patents have always offered a way for people to safely stake a claim on the discovery of an idea knowing they have a limited time to produce and maximize profit before the patent expires. They are expensive, and it is my personal dream to secure a patent one day on one of my ideas and something that I want to cover in a later video. But the Jameses lived in a time with slower means of communication. They didn't have social media and instant access to sharing the information. They understood that competition and opportunists were going to bite at their heels, regardless of whether they had a patent or not. So they pivoted and decided to have their manufacturer release the Slinky under other brand names in the hopes of flooding the market with the illusion of legitimate competition, collecting royalties with each sale and requiring each box to have the James's patent number printed on the side. Now that is clever. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna write that one down right now and save it for later. Richard, being an engineer, wasted no time and sprang into action starting the James Spring and Wire Company with his wife, Betty. They purchased materials to make their own coil winding machine to crank out the novelty. This is a proven method that many makers and inventors have done. They know they have a great idea or can join in the competition. They purchase a machine and materials and swing for the fences, bringing their ideas to life. Here on YouTube, you can see many success stories and tutorials on the popular Etsy powerhouse Cricut machines, 3D printers, CNC, laser engravers, and now even injection mold machines for home use. Later, they expanded production into an assembly line factory in Clifton Heights and an even larger facility to meet the massive demand. Success is hard work, and often, inventors and makers need to be ready to adapt to unseen obstacles, like a runner jumping hurdles in a race against the clock. Somewhere along the line, a wrench or two is going to be thrown in the works. Inventors and makers need to stay on their creative toes and continue to problem solve. They were running out of steel for their factories, and the workers were on strike at the supplier. Betty picked up the phone and contacted the president of Pittsburgh Steel and politely asked for a small supply for her slinkies. In this day and age, that may be in the form of an email, a direct message, or a phone call, free of immature wording or condescending tones that we see all too often these days with the increasing lack of professionalism. It is my personal experience multiple times in my life that if you are caught in a pickle and can calmly explain your plight, 
A reasonable person on the listening end will do their best to help you within their limits, and often, if you are sincere and appear confident and somewhat intelligent, they will go beyond their job description to help you out. This has been the case with me several times in my life at airports, dealing with connecting flights that are missed because the first flight was delayed. It has also worked with me with car mechanics saving me thousands of dollars. And it worked for Betty as she praised the man for his empathy to help others so that he could be in the position he was in as president of that company. And she was able to secure an order of steel. But why did it have to be made out of steel? Let's peel back the curtain on this physical magic. All right, period of oscillation. Uh, the oscillation of a vertically suspended slinky. The vertically suspended slinky in the periodic table of L is the length of the slinky in the gravitational field. Ah, here's the flight of stairs. So when set in motion on a step platform, get it straight. And that's how I got divorced. Okay, it's because of the longitudinal wave. Y'all ever played dose? I could do this all day if you pay me. How much you got? Spring pendulum, one would expect such dependence. You see the resemblance too? Yeah, I know. I get it all the time. All right, enough of that, and that's how it goes down the stairs. Looking at the bigger picture, James Industries was a classic success story, a happy accident that a simple profitable product sprang from, and like-minded individuals started to offer their two cents on new twists to the springs. In the early 1950s, a woman by the name of Helen Malson reached out to the couple and offered her ideas of the Slinky Dog, the Slinky Train, and other variations on the looped novelty. She received a healthy serving of royalties each year, having sold her ideas to the Jameses for sixty to $70,000 per year for 17 years since the 50s, equivalent today in 2024 to about over $700,000 per year. That is enough money to make anyone blush because your account would be flush with cash. Sales started to slow down as the product had matured, the market was getting saturated, and Richard was getting bored. His whole career was centered around the simplest little gimmick. To Richard, the slinky was no longer fun, and neither was his marriage. Betty filed for divorce in 1960 and took over the business as Richard went his own way. It turned out everyone but Richard loved a slinky. Often, those who find success feel trapped in their niche and feel the need to explore other areas of their life, feeling they could do more and find greener pastures on the other side of things. Most of us, at some point, seek a higher meaning in life and search for movements, philosophies, and work that will fill that void. Some do it for a higher power. Although meaning well, it could come at the expense of everything and everyone that were a part of their life up to that point. Richard packed up his bags and took a leap of faith in joining the Wycliffe Bible Translators Protestant group and traveled down to Bolivia and South America, leaving Betty and the slinky behind, his six children becoming collateral damage. Richard left her in debt and Betty refused to let all the hard work go to waste. But not all hope was lost. Sales exploded years later when a clever jingle was made for an ad on TVs, which could then be found in many American homes. The ad which became the longest running jingle in advertising history. That's right, everyone loves a slinky. Betty continued to run the company, fighting to make the toy affordable as inflation raised prices around her. She was a firm believer that shopping for toys should be affordable and wasn't impressed by the new wave of electronic-filled toys that raised the cost of birthday and Christmas gifts for kids. She believed in the beauty of simplicity. Richard passed in Cochabamba, Bolivia, 1974, at the young age of 56. Meanwhile, back in the States, business continued as usual. During peak popularity of the toy, complaints and reports of injuries were piling up. Due to the metallic nature of the slinky, they were easily bent and twisted out of shape, often impossible to fix. But if you watch to the end of this video, I will show you a trick to get your metal slinky back in shape. This curly coil was also made of 80 feet of conductive steel wound up into a 2 inch diameter. A very long and ideal choice to send electricity through. This posed a hazard as some curious children and toddlers accidentally inserted the slinky into electrical outlets, suffering severe electric shock and causing fires. With any product or idea, there comes a time to pivot and make a decision to change course or improve on an already working concept to stay in the game and if no one steps up to the plate, the competition certainly will. By the 1970s, a man by the name of Donald Room, Room? Rum? 
had come up with the safer, brightly colored plastic iteration of the toy. But as is the story for so many wonderful inventions, did it completely by accident. Mr. Room wasn't in the toy industry. He wasn't an Iron Man. He was a plastic man. Room was experimenting with different ways to manufacture spiral style garden hoses, the type you use to water your plants with around the house. Thinking that he had a solid concept ready to show off, those around him, particularly his children, thought it looked more like a colorful slinky instead and let him know. Room was intelligent and didn't let this crisis go to waste. Ah, yes, a plastic color slinky. Fantastic. He perfected his prototype and rushed to get in touch with Betty. After a bit of negotiation, she agreed to let Donald produce the plastic slinky through his own means of manufacturing. The plastic slinky solved a problem that occurred in new and remodeled American homes. The older homes before the 60s and 70s had steeper, narrower stairs, allowing the metal slinky with a smaller diameter to tumble downstairs with ease but the newer style of stairs evolved into a wider staircase at a safer angle, making it difficult for the metal springs to continue past the first few steps. The plastic slinky was able to push past and was better suited for the modern household. This is the first type that I ever saw, and I remember easily untangling it when I was a kid in the early 90s. The only downside being it didn't have the length, the weight, or the musical qualities that the original metal slinky had. You had to really throw it over the edge in order to get it to tumble downstairs. But it did save me from getting into trouble, not knowing what the thing was or even how it worked. I remember I loved the colors though. Let me know in the comments what your first memory of a slinky was. Did you get all tangled up in it or did you launch it down the stairs into the abyss below? The slinky isn't just a toy. It has been used for a myriad of clever solutions throughout the decades. In fact, during the Vietnam War, soldiers figured out they could use the slinky as an extended antenna for their radios, looping it around jungle trees to get a clearer signal. Long before Mark Rober's 120 million view Squirrel Maze Ninja Warrior course video, a woman in Kentucky filmed her slinky defending her bird feeder from pesky squirrels and posted it to Facebook. People have used a slinky as a cheap desktop organizer that has multiple uses. If you cut one to size, you can even use it to keep your screen door closed. Some use their steel slinky to fish out the gunk in their drains. You could even use it as a meditative tool to relieve stress and calm your nerves as you watch the waves oscillate back and forth. Ah, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. But personally, my favorite use is making Star Wars laser battles with it. The Slinky will forever have its place on this planet in some form, somewhere, being used in some fashion. It has been through a lot and still retained its shape for over 80 years, thanks to Betty's business acumen and hard work. She fought to the end to keep the Slinky affordable. She was smart and knew how much people would be willing to pay for this aging novelty. She was inducted into the Toy Industry Hall of Fame in 2001 and later passed at the ripe old age of 90 years old in 2008 in Hollidaysburg, Pennsylvania with a net worth estimated around $20 million. The company and Slinky Rights have exchanged several hands throughout the years and are now being sold under the company Just Play. And can you believe it? I picked up this rainbow colored slinky at Betty's favorite price, a dollar. What a life and what an accomplishment. Raising six children alone, fighting to keep costs low and always open-minded for collaborative opportunities for one of the most iconic toys the world has seen. So what do you think? Should Richard have stretched into foreign territory or should he have bounced back to Betty? How many slinkies do you own? Are they metal, plastic? Do you have a giant slinky like this? What? If you want one, I have a link for it in the description. Oh no, your favorite slinky is bent out of shape. Now, as promised, I will show you a trick to get your stretched out slinky back into shape. Take one end of your slinky and simply pull it through the center to the other side. Keep a good grip on the slinky and carefully pull and rotate your wrist to help it through. If it fails, you could always use the slinky for something around the house or use the link in the description to buy a few more. Thank you for watching to the end. Make sure to stay with us on this journey of exploring the process and lessons of invention and product development by liking and subscribing. If you made it this far, let me know by leaving a yo-yo emoji. Make sure to check out the last video where we explored the crazy story of the iconic 90s toy, the slap wrap. Also, 
Don't miss out on the story of a first-generation free black man's success as he used his own gas mask he invented to save lives in gas-filled tunnels at the turn of the 20th century. He is nearly forgotten, but we're going to change that. Thanks for watching and check out other videos on this channel on making your own ideas into 3D printable products. Also, check out my library of original 3D printables that I have designed for you at Colts3D.com under the name Kimchi Studios. I also post on TikTok and Instagram. Those links are in the description of this video as well. If you want to support this type of content and see more videos in the future, make sure to head over to my Patreon where you can directly support me there. I will also be releasing my 3D printables in the future through that site, and you will have full access to them before anybody else. And as always, stay grounded and never give up. See you in the next video.